Hello, and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Process Miner University, a podcast series designed to educate listeners on technology trends driving process improvement from the factory floor to the C-suite. Ladies and gentlemen, Helio Zamora, Managing Director and Founder of Industrial IoT Solutions Latin America. Helio, welcome to the podcast. Hello, Tom. Thank you for having me here. And thanks for agreeing to be our guest today, where we're going to be talking about digitizing manufacturing operations, strategy, or survival. So before we get underway and we dive into the the heavy content, uh, real quickly, tell me about your passion for golf. I understand you're a scratch golfer. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. uh, I'm a a fan. I I, I like golf. I used to... uh, uh, to love more, but after a, a soccer accident, I have four sh- uh, screws in my shoulder. My golf is not uh, is not even considered a good game. So anyway, well, tell me about a memorable round. What's your favorite venue? Look, I lived in uh, Arizona in Tucson, Arizona, for five years. My favorite course, and I used to live in a golf course. I used to live in the Ventana. Canyon uh, um, gated community where we have two golf courses, beautiful ones. But I think the most interesting golf course I played in Tucson was uh, uh, the Quarry Pines Golf Club. is a uh, is a closed um, quarry uh, mine. was very interesting. the The na- nature around is beautiful and the uh, and the uh, and the peat and all the operations that used to be a, a quarry were really really good. It was a unique unique uh, course that I had played in my life. Well, I'm very familiar with Torrey Pines, so you have impeccable mm-hmm. taste in golf. So thanks mm-hmm. for that. Hey, listen, before we get into uh, all that's going on in our industry, and boy, is there a lot going on, right? Um, tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, give us a little background, how you started the business, maybe some of the interesting work that you're doing right now uh, for the benefit of our listeners, if you don't mind. Okay, no, very good. Uh, look, I've been, I'm a mechanical engineer from, uh, by trade, but being you know, uh, in the industry, you know, engineer automation, shop floor automation for over 30 years, uh, almost 32 years old, 32 years now. And then we got, you know, I had worked with several uh, multinationals and, and uh, two years ago, a little bit more than that, I decided to start my own company and, and be uh, like a technology integrator, but also what you call a VAD, value add the distributor, where we bring good technology, uh, uh, several proved and well uh, well implemented technology in the industry and integrated them and bring them to Latin America. That is our sweet spot. So we have offices in Brazil, we have uh, offices in Mexico and uh, a series of partners and resellers spread out to, the, to Latin America. So our main goal is to offer to the Latin market uh, technology that are top in, in their category and have reference and successful customers, and are um, they they can be integrated as single solution. So such as process miner, you know, process miner is our AI uh, machine learn platform that we offer in Latin America. Fantastic. So uh, the way I see it, the work you're doing, you're right at the intersection of a lot of what uh, manufacturers are trying to drive into their operations, right? Which is new technology. Um, and really the pandemic uh, has been quite a game changer when you think about it. Uh, nobody expected it. Uh, many were ill prepared for it. Um, and manufacturers have a lot of choice these days in terms of what's available to them uh, for technology. So uh, tell me a little bit about what you're seeing, right? So there's those out there that are making investments just to survive. There's those out there that are making investments for the future as a strategy. Which is it in your mind? Well, I think it's a combination of both. You know, if you don't have a strategy to move your your, um, manufacturing, your product development and 
uh, all the all the uh, the sides of your business to a modern infrastructure and a modern technology, you won't survive. So it's a strategy to survive. I, I think IoT is here to stay. Uh, sensors being around for 40 years, but uh, you know the data uh, that used to be collected from the sensor are minimal and barely used. Now we, you know, we can collect data from multiple sensors. We can get data from the IT systems as well. And with a combination of this rich data set, you can do a lot. You can improve your products, improve your processes, improve your services. So it doesn't matter that a company like or not, the, you know, the, the, the hypes on the technology, they need to have a strategy to survive because competitors in US, competitors in Europe, Asia, uh, China in particular, and other places on the planet are coming after you. And so your business to survive, you need to, to have a strategy to invest in automation and IoT and machine learning, AI, and so on. Terrific. So as I see it, your firm is really the glue that brings all these technologies together uh, allows uh, machine data to work on uh, production lines, uh, provides the insights to people that allows them to do their jobs better, uh, helps them with things like OEE and so on. But my guess is you've seen projects succeed, you've seen projects fail. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience around strategy uh, and what you've seen work the best out there in terms of before you make investments in technology and before you get started integrating all of your uh, factory automation. What are your uh, rules of advice for folks as they continue to make this uh, digital transformation of their business? That's a great question and a multiple answers question, but <laughs> I'll try to answer. You know, look, first, trying to uh, find the problem you want to, to solve. You know, if you have a problem that is really uh, keeping you up at night, that's the, the, the problem that you're trying to solve. And then uh, try to, to map this, this, this problem as much as you can. Do not do any rocket scientist project get something that is real, something that is measurable, that you can understand the impacts that you, you are having in your, in your shop floor. For instance, you know, you eventually you are losing production to a bad, uh, you know, or bad use of a uh, combination of uh, uh, product chemicals, for instance, or if you're having a problem with machine is breaking. So those are real problems, trying to, uh, you know, uh, use those products, the problems to create use a use case to validate the technology. And then you go for, okay, let's look at the technology. There are a variety of vendors uh, for every piece of technology from sensors to AI, but try to look at companies that had a successful transition from pilots uh, to production environment. Because uh, you know, I've been around to pilots that fail in the past, and pilots that never end, pilots that never scale. So I think you know, find a problem, propose a, a short pilot, but a pilot that you can see the end. You know, you 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 plan how you're going to scale that to your entire shop floor, to entire organization. Who else are going to be involved? And uh, last but not least have executive support. Executive support is critical for any IT project, but especially in the industry 4.0, IoT, machine learning, AI, uh, we need to have executive support because those projects will uh, grow and will demand uh, the corporation to embrace them. Excellent advice. So, you know, uh, as we emerge from this pandemic and uh, we begin to see things go back into a normal state. Uh, I'm curious, are you seeing the same trends in the territories you're focused on, and particularly Latin and South America, that you are seeing here in North America, or is it a little bit different? So what we're witnessing is a, a much greater focus on the ability to get more value out of your data, do things like remote monitoring, uh, lessen uh, the dependence on operators so that they can focus on more strategic pursuits. What, is there a big difference between the markets in your mind 
uh, given the availability of skilled labor, we hear about that all the time, that uh, people are having difficulty backfilling uh, the folks that are um, retiring out of the industry. Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing uh, in, in those territories, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, the challenges are very similar in North America and South America in terms of uh, you know, the need for better understand the data you're collecting, have a better visibility to the shop floor, uh, use the data to, uh, to, uh, to support intelligent decisions. So the challenges are the same. Latin America in terms of uh, manpower is in terms of U US and Canada have a lot of uh, uh, qualified manpower going retiring uh, as we speak. But Latin America is a little behind in this trend, but it still is a challenge. But I think we are, uh, you can get in, in Mexico, uh, Brazil, uh, Colombia, Chile, and even Argentina, a few pockets of good talent people that you can leverage in your projects, of, uh, you know, of automation projects, uh, if you will. But yeah, I would say uh, the overall challenge is the same. Uh, remember that most of the companies are multinationals in the region. We do have national companies in Brazil and Mexico. They are huge. They, you know, they're well known, but they are not many. But and they, uh, the multinationals have similar problems. The Brazilian companies, they tend to, to, to follow the trends uh, globally. So uh, we, we are in the same boat with different speaking uh, abilities. <laughs> Understood. Thank you for that. So uh, last question I'll ask for this podcast is uh, would love you to give us a little bit of a prediction about the future. If you were to look uh, in your crystal ball and say three to five years out, how different will manufacturing um, look, feel, operate in three to five years, in your opinion? Look, it's always a good exercise to uh, predict the future. Uh, I would say uh, we're going to see, especially also you had mentioned that the COVID is being an accelerator for that. We're going to be more automation in the shop floor, more than we always uh, saw in the past or you're seeing today. Uh, you know, going to be see less people on the shop floor. The, you know, technologists like remote monitoring will be prevail. We have uh, less people. And sitting now in a common uh, a control room, a remote control room, you're going to be able to manage multiple sources and understand the health of your equipment, the health of your machines, but also the quality of the products you are producing uh, in a near real time, real time fashion. So I think this is this is what the industry is going. There is no way that there is no turn back. You're not going to return to to. Uh, shop floors and fabric and manufacturing shop floors that are not fully automated. If you and I are gonna start a company today, we're gonna to go full automation. And so this is a trend and more than a trend that we are seeing that every day, the demands of technology uh, uh, that we uh, empower the, uh, the companies to move from traditional uh, watch and see for more, uh, okay, let's react before the machine breaks. Uh, capabilities that we have, for instance, inside uh, process miner that allows you to to interact with the data and predict uh, future failure. That would be mandatory for the companies today. In the five years, will be you know I think everybody's going to be using it. Excellent, Helio. I can't thank you enough for uh, agreeing to be our guest on today's podcast. So thank you for that. Until next time. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you, Helio.